welcome to the only. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to the On Review channel. This is Olavi Sivir, okay, and this is Oluwani Femi. I know. <laughs> She's my friend from school, and we've known each other for many years now. But let's leave the years. Yeah. But she's a wonderful person, and she's <laughs> no, but sincerely, she's a beautiful Christian that I look up to. I do actually. I admire. Can't stop it. I really admire her. I do, and she's like one of those Christians in school where you be looking like God, make my own too like this, make me a fire for you like this, make me, make me fire brand. Like see people loving you, see people pouring their love on you. Help me pour my love like this. And I've noticed something in her life that she really, she knows how to explain the love of God. Huh. And even though we can't fully explain it, but in this video, she's going to help us have a simpler understanding of God's love simpler understanding of God's forgiveness and a simpler understanding of how me as a Christian how I can love God more and how a sinner can come to God wholeheartedly and we'll be looking at it from the parable of the money lender in Luke 7 from verse 37 to 48 so let me read the scripture okay. verse 36 one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to come to his home for lunch, and Jesus accepted the invitation. As they sat down to eat, a woman of the streets, a prostitute, heard he was there and brought an exquisite flask filled with expensive perfume. Going in, she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping with tears falling down upon his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair and kissed them and poured the perfume on them. When Jesus' host, a Pharisee, saw what was happening, and who the woman was he said to himself this proves that jesus is no prophet for if he if god had really sent him he would know what kind of woman this is then jesus spoke up and answered his thoughts simon he said to the pharisee i have something to say to you all right teacher simon replied go ahead then jesus told him this story a man loaned money to two people loaned money to two people five thousand dollars to one and five hundred dollars to the other but neither of them could pay him back so he kindly forgave them both, letting them keep the money. Which do you suppose loved him most after that? I suppose the one who had owed him the most, Simon answered. Correct, Jesus agreed. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look, see this woman kneeling here? When I entered your home, you didn't bother to offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You refused me the customary kiss of greeting. But she has kissed my feet again and again from the time I first came in. You neglected the usual courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head. But she has covered my feet with rare perfume. Therefore, her sins, and they are many, are forgiven. For she loved me much. But one who is forgiving little shows little love. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then the men at the table said to themselves, Who does this man think he is, going around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Mm -hmm. So, from this parable, what do you think that? What do you think Jesus was trying to pass across? Um. Well, I, one thing I would say is Jesus doesn't take love lightly. Your unique expression of love, He doesn't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, you see some people in worship, they cry, some people dance, some people pray. Other people are like, ah, is it that you? Yes. You know, David <laughs> worshipped and tore his clothes. I mean, that is against the rules of courtesy and public, you know, <laughs> composure. But God is a diehard fan of love. He's a lover. And that gene, that nature has been put in us. Whether you like it or not, the spirit you carry is a spirit of love. The Bible says that love of the Father was shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love-giving spirit. Christ is love. As Christians, we are lovers love that's the summary of the commandment we are lovers mm -hmm. you know the bible says even if you speak in the tongues of angels you know spiritual truths you deliver your body to be born you give out all you have and you have not love you don't have anything you know so god doesn't take love for granted and one thing is i stood out for me is it's okay to love god it's okay to love god in ex in expressions that are unique you don't have to love god the same way the other you don't have to express love the same way the other person is expressing it you know if i want to 
stand up and cry during worship it's fine it doesn't make my love more than the person that is just silent and just gazing on the beauty of god every unique expression of love is so precious he does not take it for granted the love doesn't necessarily mean you have to start wiping his feet or put an imaginary jesus and if that's how yes. you feel to express it then that's fine but this scripture we should see the spirit behind this you know the bible says the letter because that spirit gives life the spirit behind this is showing genuineness worship from a deep conviction from a from a depth that was real she could have done people can do acts of worship from a false place but she was moved she just heard about jesus and she took her only flask and what got to be loved she did it from her heart it did make sense to those around her people were busy looking and condemning her that this one like in our day and you can be like that brother that was shouting that was angry at a believer yesterday is that how men of god act and today is leading worship and is crying and is doing i'm sure the tears are crocodile tears my dear it's not your place god sees the heart mm. don't be stuck in the grave when jesus has resurrected mm. don't be stuck on what the person has done when that person and his creator has made peace mm. you know? so I, I, from this that you just said i don't I want to ask a question like now christians know that that they, they cannot even express themselves like they have that oh my god i want to actually love you more i want to actually like see how this woman how she just naturally just poured her oil poured everything cried used her hair to wipe with no shame in reckless abandon sometimes we Christians we don't even feel like it so i want what i want to ask is that how can we get to that point where we just give ourselves in reckless abandon in worship in loving god and what do we have to see before we can get to that point i i i think one thing i would say is a revelation of what jesus did for us you know in line with what you said the revelation of what actually happened at the cross it's a story we grew up listening to in sunday school but a lot of us can say scriptures up our head but we've not really encountered the truth of that spirit of what happened i know the bible says that the letter kills but the spirit gives life so the person who reveals to us is the Holy Spirit. Mm. And you know, a broken heart, a contrite um, heart and a broken spirit, God will not disfend. It's as deep as just asking the Lord, you know, Holy Spirit, I want you to reveal to me what Jesus did. I want you to take me to the cross. Because you know, the Bible says that he shall teach us all things. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the one that shows us the gravity of what Christ did. Because without him, it's just a story somebody just went to god sent his son went to the course and died from it can generate some form of emotion because maybe you've encountered some parts of god so you can you know generate some form of response you know but it's the holy spirit that really enlightens us into how much forgiveness we've received the holy spirit that enlightens us into how much the lord values us mm -hmm. how much he decided it was worth anything taking our place it was even worth the death of his son you know yes it was god that released his son for us not that the pharisees no jesus said nobody i am the one that lays down my life you can't take it from me he laid down god we we need to come to that place of understanding the sacrifice and why the sacrifice and that comes by the holy spirit you cannot see you know conviction except the holy spirit convicts you that what you did was wrong yes yeah, true so he's the spirit that convicts and that makes us realize that okay what christ did was was amazing was a big deal mm. to me not just generally to me to me if any yes to the body but to me if any first mm. and then there's something that struck me is that in that particular parable we say that so which of them will love him more the the one what the one with 50 now that had 50 that thought you know okay i'm just owing little the the thing is that is you only know that you are owing little from what you have seen if you've not seen that okay you were owing a lot you will think ah, well she be just ten naira that i would think if he forgives me no problem now that she be ten naira but if you knew the gravity the nature like like what you were saying now that the holy spirit will show you how deep you were into like in you were deep away from god because you know like now as a christian i was before i gave my life to christ i was a good girl i didn't do anything bad i like like look at i did some things bad but yeah but like you're like, the average good girl i was the average good girl you go home training yeah so i wasn't the one that you know you wear totally off 
what I've understood is that I didn't really fully understand the gravity of okay, Jesus exchanging, Jesus taking my place, Jesus dying for me on the cross, like Jesus paying my debt, and then I receive forgiveness because you know. I wasn't really that bad. Mm. So when we judge ourselves, when we people that were not as bad judge ourselves from that place of okay, we will not really see that gravity. But is as we go on, as we go on, as the Holy Spirit keeps on opening our eyes to show us that see, it's not about the good deeds that you did before. See, Jesus, you were supposed to pay for with death. You were supposed to pay with death, but God gave His Son. To die for you and it was an exchange so you did not pay again because even the, the bible says that if you disobey one of these laws even one that you have missed it all mm. but you know redemption and innocence innocence are not the same thing mm. salvation is not the same thing as good deeds if you deliver your body to be burned i think that's first corinthians 13 and you have not love mm. You don't have anything. Good deeds are that that righteousness of works of the flesh are filthy rags, irrespective mm. of you know that man is just a right, just a good person, is just a good person. You know, the goodness itself is still falling mm. in its nature. It's not righteousness. Mm. You know, so the, the 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 revelation of how much. Christ did for us how on, on the course an encounter with the truth of that not just head knowledge is what brings us to a place of genuine gratitude mm. of genuine worship so I think from that as we keep on understanding the fact that see as we walk on this earth day after the day after day God did something great for me and that is that thing that he did that the way he has forgiven me is what will make me love him is what will make me be able to want to love reading the scriptures it's what will make me be able to want to love praying because all these things cannot like this lady now she just everything flowed from their the half breaking the alabaster box it was out of an understanding of the forgiveness that god had give, has given she had received so we cannot break any alabaster box except we have understood the forgiveness that we have received and i think another thing that you know helps this lady is she understood that the forgiveness was total Hmm. Sometimes we think that oh, God has. We think that there is a threshold to the forgiveness God has or God can give. That worship, that brokenness was. This man forgave, like this forgiveness that for the, for the guy that like from the um, parable, mm -hmm. the man forgave the total sum. He didn't forgive four hundred and nine nine nine. He mm -hmm. forgave the whole five thousand. Mm -hmm. So the understanding that. Like, I don't have to even pay back one dime. He has forgiven me all of my sins. Every single thing. Mm. That place brings us in, to a place of, of awe, of worship, of mm. love, understanding. And a lot of us feel like we don't understand the love of the Father. We feel like, oh, sometimes we have that mindset that, okay, let's say somebody did something wrong now. You think that oh, God will now just start forgiving you today of what you just, it will quickly come and die for you, a new death, mm -hmm. a new forgiveness. But if you understand that from the beginning, from the foundation, the lamb was slain, the forgiveness has been seen. Satan cannot even guilt trip you because you understand how much price the Lord paid. And sorry, I just want to chip this in. There is nothing you've done that will make you worthless. There is nothing you've done that will make you not worth the forgiveness of the Lord. While we were yet sinners, God loves us. I know it makes no sense logically. There is no theory that you can use to explain somebody dying for you while you do not give a hoot about the person. There is no... That's why sometimes it's so hard to receive it because we are too used to a reward, a yes. doing and reward yes. system that we don't understand that I was just on my own and someone said you, I will die for you. I will carry your matter on my head. That's why many times we still see ourselves as Christians still going back to that bondage. Of, yes. Let me do this so that God will. Yes, so that so God that, will love me more. Yes. Let me do this so that God will forgive me more. Yes. Let me do this so that you were forgiving, you are forgiving, you will always be forgiving. The Father's love does not make sense. That is it why it is love sense. and not lost. Love really is. Doesn't and, make you sense. know, if I'm talking to someone here that maybe just saying that, okay. But you know, God has, God has put so many 
like I, I need to live up to these things. I need to live up to okay. Like I, I, I saw a, an article that spoke about how love is patient, love is kind, love is all the things love is. And then we as Christians, we then be like, okay, I must be patient. Okay, I must show love to my brother. Okay, I must. And then what now happens is that you now begin to try to do these things with your power, and you can't do it with your power except the Holy Spirit reveals to you the forgiveness of God. What I'm just understanding is that from everything that we have just said is that forgiveness when you understand god's forgiveness when you understand what god did for you on the cross what he sent his son to do for you on the cross then you'll be able to receive that love yes and then you'll be able to love him yes and you'll be able to do anything that god says any anything he says okay busy do this for me you'll be like hey but okay i will do it because it will just naturally flow all these things will naturally flow Yes, it will naturally flow. And one thing I see why it will flow also is because of the Holy Spirit. Mm. He is the one in the first place who convicts us of sin, of righteousness and mm. of judgment. He is the one in the first place that reveals Jesus to us. He is the one that reveals how much we are forgiven. He is the one that makes us understand salvation. Mm. The whole package of salvation is forgiveness, grace, you know, all that is Christ. And yes, once we understand that, because we know that the provision of forgiveness, of salvation, the Holy Spirit is in it. So we understand that He is at work in us both to will and do according to His good pleasure. In line with what you were saying about when God tells you to do something, you know that the, you know that the plan of salvation catered for the instruction. Mm. You know that because He gave us the Holy Spirit. You know that, okay, I can ask for strength. You know that the water in you is not one that dries out. It's one that springs up onto everlasting life. Mm. You know that there's always grace. You know that there's always love. You can always come back and say, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy. And you don't have to say it in the language of this. I don't have to act like you. I don't I have to act like yes. a minister of God. I am loved in my way. And Daddy teaches me to love him. Mm. I love him because he loved me first. So when I understand what he did on the cross, when I understand the forgiveness, when I understand he loved me first, it's call and response. Our his deep calls onto our deep. We are responding, you know. Our hearts cry, Lord, I just want to love you more. Is us responding to his ah, Uluwani Femi, come up here. Mm. So you just think is oh, I just love God. I just but he's he's the one that is calling. Mm. And our love is a response yeah. because Bible says you love him. I don't care what you, you love him because he first loved you. Mm. When you understand that he loved me first. He loves me, not he likes me, not he's managing me, not he's fond of me, not he's used to me, not maybe because people have said nice things, now I will be acceptable to God. Maybe because BC said, oh, Nifem is this, I will be acceptable to God. No, God loved me. Wow. Then I'm able to love him. I first receive. It's okay to receive. It's okay to receive the love of the Father because in it you find strength to love him back. So the song that has been playing through my heart as we've been speaking, or as we've been speaking, is this this woman was a sinner and there are many times as christians you know when we do something that we know like we are not supposed to do that we know that god will not necessarily be pleased with and we are feeling bad instead of going to the other way go to the feet of jesus as this woman did she was a literally she was a sinner a sinner is someone that cannot approach god but she took all the boldness like you you need to, we need to be bold the bible says that let us then approach him with is it um come boldly come to the throne of, of grace to obtain, to, to obtain mercy and to, and find favor in time of need. need so we come for mercy even when we have seen like even when we did something really bad and we know that you just feel ashamed to even enter the church what all i see here is that she went and broke the alabaster box she went and cried on his feet don't cry away from his feet cry on his feet that yeah. jesus i have done something so yeah. terrible i don't think you can forgive me but i know you have forgiven me you had knowledge i know you have forgiven me, but the way i feel so bad mm. i don't think i'm i'm supposed to to even still be a christian and then jesus will say to you that your sins are forgiven he didn't even say your sins will be forgiven he said your sins are forgiven and that your faith has saved you go in peace mm. so let that just be your heart every single time that you feel like i have not done enough i have done wrong and always come back to his feet 
like David did after he messed up, he came, he came to God and uh, for Bathsheba, he prayed and after he gave thanks to God. And you know, it's in the place of God or being with God that you receive strength and healing. The devil plays mind games of guilt tripping believers and you think God is angry at you after the Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of conviction. Confess, Lord, help me. Teach me not to do this again. I do not want to do this. I know it's against your nature. Even if you don't have the desire, walk in me to desire not to do this again. And come back. God is not angry at you. Come back. Say, Father, I'm sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. Walk in me. Genuine repentance. I'm sorry. And when you say you're sorry, God is not re reducing you to a lower level than you were. Do you understand? Mm. You are not any less of a son. You are reinstated. That's redemption. Bringing you back to where you were. The story of the prodigal son is one that is mind blowing. I mean, this guy told his dad, he came in my inheritance. He blew it. And when he came back, his father saw him from afar. He could not hold the love. When him and his father met, he gave him, he gave him a fine robe, he gave him a ring. He didn't just say, okay, yeah, my son, go back to the, he even dressed him up back in the regalia of his son. So no matter how high you were and you fall in, mm -hmm. come back boldly, even for mercy. Mercy, oh, not boldly come to receive power to save me more. Mercy, that means you need Mercy. grace, you need forgiveness for something. Come boldly, come like it's yours because it is yours. Before mm -hmm. the foundations of the world, I had already stapled it as yours. I want to ask this question because like, I notice that sometimes in our lives we want to, because we are Christians and we want to. Okay, let me let me do this to please God, let me do this so that God will love me more. Like how does that play out? Like what is what exactly is there in pleasing God and then making God love me more? Can, is there something like God will love me more? God cannot love you more. I'm sorry. <laughs> he has exhausted it. Bible says God is love and he gave you himself. Love has been exhausted on you. Like God has loved you, is loving you, will continue to love you, has loved, 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 loved you, is still <laughs> loving you. The love is just overflowing her. Who is man that you are mindful of him? He loves you. So the fact that you are saved doesn't mean the love has increased. The fact that you know you've obeyed doesn't mean the love has increased. Yes, if you love me, you obey me, but your obedience is not a condition for my love. Hmm. I loved you before the foundations of the world. I mean, this the lamb was slain before you were brought into the earth. Hmm. He has loved you. It's Satan that makes us feel like, oh, when we've seen the love has reduced. I mean, I had a good reputation. I was the one that God could just tap and be like, if let me go outside and do this. And I'm just, but well, now, you know, I fell into this thing. Oh, God can love me more. I've broken my track record of purity with God. I'm doing this, doing this. God is love. I just want to say as well that God loves you. You know, God is not a father, irrespective of the experience you've had with an earthly father or somebody's father. That's not the yardstick of who the Lord is. Come for healing. Let him heal you. Let him love you into maturity. Let him nurture you. The Holy Spirit is a nurturer. Jesus is a nurturer. Things, some things that one thing I would pick out from my work with god what god is, has been teaching you has taught me then maybe ha there might have been some things that i was doing that were wrong or maybe not expressly written or i had not read that point of scripture that you know it was wrong at the right time the lord brought conviction it's a journey your path shines brighter and brighter till the perfect day you know so each time god is working in you both to will and you know the beautiful thing about the teaching capacity of jesus is that jesus is a teacher that actually teaches so if he teaches you you would learn okay. nobody can tell you the extent to which god loves you nobody can say oh, anything. this is the threshold of the love of god if you do this you will become unloved mm -hmm. me when i did this you no know, i could never go back to the fold i was you know you know and you'll be getting you know you'll be feeling like ah, okay this is how much god loves you i'm saying this to say that if you fall into sin there is no sin that is too bad for god to forgive you know it's like me i got beaten for you mm -hmm. jesus paid the price nobody can tell him the extent to which okay. he will love you it's not them that stayed on the cross he chopped the cane somebody else is not telling you that this is the threshold of his love did they chop the cane 
It's like, let's say, like, he does something so bad, then he yeah. murder somebody, and somebody's like, ah, that one has gone. Yes, oh, you can't have this. There's no, uh, there's no, that one. He's worshiping. Like, Jesus is like, are you the one that died for him? Yes. Is do, 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 do you know how much we are going to help if it was? Please, oh, please, please leave me alone. No, I know what I suffered from this, so please let me protect him. Keeps coming after you. God's love is not lax. It's a love that keeps fighting. So God is not a lover that you're offended and be like, I'm not talking to you. It's a lover that <laughs> That's him. I'm so like, I'm sorry. So you need to you need to accept, receive his love. Yeah. You need to receive his love. And I just want to I want us to say that like if you have not received Jesus Christ, if you have not understood his love. I believe this is the time for you to understand this is from, from this. I just pray you, your heart, if your heart is being convicted right now, that you, and you just feel like you should just accept God's love for you and you know, and believe that He is the Son of God, believe that He came to die for you, believe that He has taken the, your place in paying your debt of sin, and you want to just accept Him as your Lord and your Savior. I would just like you to. Do you want to pray or do you want to read them into? Can we pray? Heavenly Father, mm-hmm. we thank you so much for being our Father. Sorry. I want you to repeat after her as you say it. Heavenly Father, yes. thank you for being my Father. Mm-hmm. Thank you because you said if I come before you, you will not cast me out. Mm-hmm. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Mm-hmm. I believe that the Lord raised you from the dead. Mm-hmm. I thank you for forgiving me my sins. Thank you for all that you've done for me on the cross of Calvary. I say yes to you and accept it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I want to congratulate you because genuine repentance brings you into salvation. Like this sinner lady, she was genuinely repentant and she went and was like, Jesus, I have done more than you can. She didn't say anything, but the way she just left her heart there. And then Jesus said that your faith has saved you, you can go in peace. So if you have believed in this world that we have just shared with you, you can go in peace knowing that God loves you. He you does. can go in peace and find a good Bible believing church and get baptized in the name of Jesus and they would lead you in the path of God. You can also call us. My you can all message me more. Maria underscore if you don't catch out will come. What is your email address? Do you want me first seven at gmail dot com? If you feel that God has hurt you, you know maybe you were you used to love God and you feel like he did something and like, ah pity <laughs> talk to him about it. God is a lover. He wants he wants to deal with your wickedness. That's not his nature. That's not his nature. For him to make you go through something, it's love. Because God is love. You may not understand it, but you won't receive understanding elsewhere apart from him. You won't receive healing elsewhere apart from him. You know, he's a lover. Though he strikes, he cogs and comforts, but he chastens those he loves. So if you ever felt like, I've lost my love, I've lost my intimacy, I've lost my desire, other things are more pleasurable to me than you, Lord. Talk to him about it. Honestly, mm-hmm. a simple prayer from you. I just tell him, Lord Jesus, help me love you. Help me love you. I receive your love that I may love you. I receive your love. I, I love you. In fact, confess it. Lord, I love you. I love you. Help me love you. And I just want to say that you can only find satisfaction in God. You can only find satisfaction. See, the all, all the clamoring that we do on the earth, like, like you know, desire to get more wealth get um, more friends get a boyfriend get a girlfriend get a husband get children like that all the it's it's because we are looking for things to satisfy us and there's that that satisfaction can't be filled except god is in it and it's when god is in it that even all those other things can even be okay the satisfaction is primarily from god is the love that you receive from god is that work in that relationship that overflows. Mm-hmm. I'm able to love my husband because I I've received the love of God and I'm able to love him back. I'm able to love my friends 
because there is a source mm. that springs up to everlasting life. There's a bubbling. There's water that constantly erupts. So the channels break out. Bible says rivers of living water. It's one water body. It's one Holy Spirit. So I'm able to, you mm. know, express in my workplace, in my workplace, in to my the, family, yes, to I'm my children, able to love to my, my enemies. Yes. I'm able to care for. I'm able to show compassion when the world wants to turn away. I'm able to because the river inside me is a river of love. And Bible says that he that is forgiving me too, he loves me too. Mm. When you understand how much God has forgiven, you're able to love your neighbors. Yes, yes, you're able to like, yes, 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 yes. So when you're when you're saying God, I need to love more. I need to be patient more. I need to be gentle more. Ask the Holy Spirit to sh- reveal to you how you God is gentle to you. Father. Can I just say a prayer with you? Okay, say a prayer with us. Lord Jesus, Lord. I'm signing up for a love life with you. I want to love you the way you want me to. Mm. I thank you for your Holy Spirit mm. that you've given me to love you the way I should love you. Mm. Holy Spirit, I decree that I love you as I should. Mm. I receive your love. Mm. I thank you because you love me to the fullest. Mm. I thank you because I am found in your love. Mm. I thank you because your love is real to me. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being real to me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being real to me. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for being real to me. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And because you love me, I can love others around Amen. me. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. We are grateful. Thank you, Nifemi. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank and you. thank you very much for watching. If you really have any question, if you have a anything any contribution drop it in the comment section below and don't forget to email us if you need anything thank you very much we love you one more thing thing. okay the lord loved the woman in her sinful state when she came jesus didn't rebuke her it is a ta um (laughs) prostitute excuse me oh i'm a man of great repute doesn't she know that i'm in public you know sometimes because some people would have shown love too because we're in a certain environment Mm. you know we don't want them to think that we are doing so we, we we follow a certain rule that is not god but when she came even in her state of sinfulness the lord allowed her noise the lord allowed her kiss hmm. this woman was a sinful the lord allowed her to wash with her hair the oh lord allowed god. it he loved her in her sinful state where you are ask the lord tell jesus i love you help me to love you help me to know who you are god did not rebuke her in that state she expressed love you know mm. despite the fact that she was a sinner she was bold enough to come thank you very much for watching see you guys next week bye <laughs> how god is patient with you how god you know <laughs> 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 you guys are what is big to me <laughs> I was like, okay, hold on, hold on. Alright, I was like, it's out. I'm not preaching. <laughs> <laughs>